Good evening. My name is Caitlin. This is KTXX22 Reading and welcome back to my channel. So I am going to do a longer video, but it's going to suffice as an August wrap up and a September TBR. I'm prepared. I've got my munch in here in the book room with me because it's about an hour before he goes to bed <laughs> and he is living his best life playing with a plastic bag because that's what they do first things first i got something gorgeous in the mail today i got a new book sleeve a bookish book sleeve from the book porter i'm super pumped this is very much my aesthetic pumpkins halloween the inside is this lovely like olive green color. I love it. And it also came with this gorgeous bookmark. Next thing that I wanted to show off were a couple of books that I recently hauled. You probably do not know, but my husband and I, we bought a house at the beginning of this year. And for the past two, three years, the only books that I purchased were either books for my son or a one-off here or there. And I've pretty much stuck to the buy band because everything on this shelf behind me are unread books with the exception of the ones that are my stacks for my either TBR or my wrap up. I ended up buying this one, The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. I, as you can see, I got it on discount for six bucks. I read this book earlier this year, absolutely loved it, got wrecked, felt all of my emotions and I needed it for my personal collection. I do not typically keep anything that I read unless I think that at some point in time in the future I will reread it. This is definitely a book that I will look forward to rereading in the future. The next book I got is something that I have not read yet and I believe it is the second book in us in the series by David Wan and that's the John Dies at the End. Um, and this one's called What the Hell Did I Just Read by David Wong. I, like I said, it's either the second or the third book. I know that I have the other one on my shelf. The only one that I don't have is the first book in the series because why would you do Also, that's why I got it. I knew I was going to want it. That is the last of my bookish goodness. Let's get into the August wrap up. For the month of August, I read 23 books and that breaks down to five graphic novels, 14 audiobooks, one physical book. Um, <laughs> he thinks mommy's funny. And three bedtime stories, which are also physical books, but I break up my children's stories from my physical reading. Uh, as you can tell, audiobooks are my prime way of reading because they are convenient. Let's let's not eat that, sir. No. <laughs> your bag. You know, it's fine. The first book that I finished in the month of August was Pratt Queens Volume 6, The Infernal Path by Curtis J. Weeb. Um, I gave this four stars. Uh, I had read the other five books in this graphic novel series the month prior and this series is really hit or miss for me i enjoyed volume six but then the next book i read was rat queens volume seven the once and future king uh, by ryan fairnier i think that's how you say his name and i gave that one two stars and this series was just okay uh, the artwork was in some of them excellent and in others not so great the next book i finished was In an Absent Dream, Wayward Children's Series book number four by Shawnee McGuire. I gave this book five stars. Overall, this series so far for me is five stars across the board. I enjoyed the mystery in the first book, but I have enjoyed the worlds in the other books. So love, they're short. They are a perfect for me. I can read them in a, in a day while I'm at work. The next book I read, I did a full video for, a full video review for, and that was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morena Garcia. I gave that five stars. I loved every minute of it. It was 
everything that I was hoping it would be and then some. I have cautioned a lot of people and I did so in my video that it is a horror book not a thriller so if you're going in thinking you're gonna get something that is not normal then <laughs> you'd be okay but if you're thinking you're getting like a typical thriller you're wrong so don't go into it thinking that. The next book was Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. This book is phenomenal. I gave it five stars. It, for me, this is one of the best horror books I have ever read. I think that it is better than It, which is what I would say I would compare this to. A uh, group of young boys, creeping terror in a small town. Yo, dog, what's going on? Don't destroy mommy's books. Five out of five. Love this. And um, if you are not following me on Goodreads, I review everything more in depth on my Goodreads or on my Instagram, which is KTXX22. And you can see my full review on either of those places. Hey, what are you doing? The next book I finished in August was Circe by Madeline Miller. This was a book club pick for one of my library's book clubs. And it was just okay. I gave it three stars. I had heard a lot of really amazing things about this. <laughs> he is standing up and like playing with the books on my bookshelf. Um, thankfully I push all of my books back so it's not like you can push them off the backside but still. I enjoyed Circe but I didn't love this. I thought that three quarters of this book was really really boring and didn't start getting invested until Odysseus showed up. Written very well just not for me. The next book was a reread of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. It is the first time that I am reading this via audiobook. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna move because he's right here by the thing. Ooh. The first time that I had listened to this on audiobook and it is my favorite Harry Potter book and has been for many a year. I absolutely adore this book. I think that it is a great character study in Voldemort and his psychosis of being a psychopath. Love it. <laughs> five out of five. The next book I finished was Relic by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. This is book one in the Pendergrass series and I gave it four stars. I just really enjoyed this. It reminded me so much of Michael Crichton and I love Michael Crichton. There's like 20 books in this series. I'm going to continue. I can get most of them on audio so <laughs> so I will probably do that for any books in the future and I believe I have another book in this series already on my shelf. The next book I finished in August was The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel. It is a one and done graphic novel. I gave it three stars. It was cute. However, for me, the story would have been better served as a regular book or with more detail. There's not a lot of dialogue in this graphic novel, which typically I don't mind, but for a story about a prince who likes to wear drag and the stuff that goes on with it, it was sweet. I can't say anything negative about it because I did enjoy the story. The next book I read was Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. I have been sleeping on Jeanette Winterson for forever because I have this is my first book of hers that I've read and I loved it. I gave it a four out of five. I think the only reason I docked it a point was that it was a little slow paced at times but really liked it. The next book I did a full rant review for and that is One to Watch by Kate Seaman London. I gave it a one star garbage hot garbage and if you would like to see my rant review I will link it down below. All I will tell you is that if you are a plus sized woman, do not hurt yourself by reading a book that decided that it was going to be a romance novel that would take all of the parts and all of the nasty traumatic things that people have probably said do in your life and just no, no, don't, don't waste your time. Next book I read this month was Don't Call Us Dead, which is a collection of poetry by Denez Smith. I gave this four stars two or three of the poems in this collection hurt me. I cried uh, and actually I listened to them more than once because I needed to hear him say it again. I highly recommend the audiobook because he reads it and it's only an hour and a half long. There were a couple of them that I was not a fan of but 
that's how it goes with poetry. Some of them you love and they change your life and the other ones are just okay. Next book that I finished was Sandman Volume 5, A Game of You by Neil Gaiman. I gave it five stars. Um, again, this is Volume 5 in the Sandman series. I have been working my way through the graphic novel series and it's very slowly. Usually I get through them really quickly, but currently it's not happening. I don't have a lot to say about it because it's the fifth book in a series. This book I read was In the Dream House, a memoir by Carmen Maria Machado. I did a full review for this. This book is so good. It's, it probably my favorite book I've read this year. Yeah, probably my favorite book I've read this year. If you want more of my opinions on that book, please watch my full review. Amazing. And once again, another author that I had not read from before that I just really enjoyed. The next book was Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I gave this five stars. I have read all four of Riley Sager's books. Final Girls, I gave three star, four stars to. <laughs> the last time I lied, I gave five stars to. Loved it. Lock every door. Uh, it was okay. I gave three stars to this one. I gave five stars to. I just really liked it. I like the premise of the haunted house. For me, it gives me horror vibes as a thriller, and I approve that. What I will compare it to is Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. If you have not read that, please read that, and then you can draw your own conclusions on what it's compared to. The next book was The Classic Starts Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, but it was edited by Tania Zamoski. And we read this as a bedtime story, didn't we? Had, it had pictures and we really liked it. I think that this might have been a little too much for an eight month old. I mean, I was reading it. There's some, there's some pretty heavy things in it. So I gave it a three out of five. Next book reread was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Now, Stephen Chbosky, has recently published a horror novel that I have on my TBR that I have not gotten to yet. But when I was in high school, The Perks of Being a Wallflower came out and I remember the first time I read that book. Um, much similar to the first time I read Catcher in the Rye, I read it, God, I think I was like 11. I read it a lot younger than most everybody does because I didn't read it for school, I read it for pleasure. The Perks of Being a Wallflower, I remember just being one of those books that you get to read in school that you just absolutely love. <laughs> Upon rereading, I ended up giving this a four out of five. So I docked it a star for my original rating on Goodreads, which was the five out of five. And the reason I docked it to start was because there, it, it wasn't as good as I remember it being and not for the same reasons as I thought. I still felt the nostalgia and I still felt the friendship group and found family, but there was some execution issues that I just wasn't a fan of. Next book I finished was another bedtime story and that was Little Owl's Night by Devaya. Srinvasan. I give this one three stars. I thought it was cute, but I didn't think that there was enough substance to warrant such a large book. The next book that we read, and it was another bedtime story, was Monsters New Undies by Samantha Berger. And I freaking love this. This was cackle worthy. I loved reading this to my son. The back cover is super cute. Um, it's backwards and it's his little behind. This I can't recommend enough if you are a new parent and you want something that's cute and funny. Five stars from me. The next book I read was an ALC from Libra FM and that was The Switch by Beth O'Leary and this book was right time, right place. I needed it in my life and I'm so glad that I was accepted into Libro FM's ALC program. I gave this book four stars because predictability. <laughs> Probably my biggest issue with romance novels is they are predictable. That will always dock at a point for me. Maybe it's a character flaw. <laughs> Don't eat that one either. My goodness, son. This is not, it's not snack time. These are your books. Give me your books. We read these, huh? You want to flip through them? Next book, I 
finished slash DNF'd um, was my reread of The Dark Tower, which is book seven in the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. I was finishing an audio reread. I physically read them the first time I read the series. This time around I thought, oh, I'll listen to the audiobooks. And I have been in really enjoying them. Unfortunately, I was just tired. I was done. I didn't want to be reading something that I had already read. And there's just so many good books on my TBR that I didn't finish it, but I did give it five stars because that was my old rating. It was five stars then. The next book I finished was The Sandman Volume 6, which is Fables and Reflections by Neil Gaiman. This is my least favorite Sandman book. I gave it two stars. I literally legitimately only liked two parts of this 260 odd page graphic novel, um, which is really disappointing because previously the other graphic novels have been five out of five, four out of five, loved. So I'm actually taking a break from The Sandman because if it's not bringing you joy, let it go. Let it go for now. I definitely want to come back to it and finish it. The last book that I finished in the month of August was A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. Uh, it was an ALC from Libro FM. Thank you again. I gave this book four stars as well. And in my reading vlog, which I will tag down below, I mentioned that this is a book that I need to reread. Um, and I need the physical book to reread because I want to highlight and annotate. And if you know me, I do not do that ever on anything. I just not my thing. So I definitely want to reread that and see if it's more of a five star read. For now, I'm giving it a four. All right, now let's talk about my September TBR. For the month of September, I have gotten four books as ALC copies from Libro FM. And those books are Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I read three Frederick Bachman books two years ago, loved every one of them, and unfortunately haven't read any more of his books, which is a me problem. And I'm going to rectify that with this ALC of Anxious People. The next book I'm getting as an ALC, oh, it's almost time for you to eat, is Shit Actually by Lindy West. I love Lindy West. She is amazing. Um, and so looking forward to hearing her talk about movies because I appreciate her commentary on a lot of stuff. And it's almost bedtime. <laughs> the next book I got from Libro FM was To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. I was too old to read the Aragon series or what is it called? The Inheritance series. Uh, way back when it came out. I uh, So I have never read those books before, but this is a sci-fi book and mommy loves sci-fi. It's my favorite genre. This book sounds amazing. Uh, especially if it's got some spooky, then it's going to be more akin to Pandorum, which is one of my all-time favorite horror sci-fi movies. And the last book that I got, which I am so excited to read is Transcendent mm -hmm. Kingdom by Ya Yasi. I also have her other book, Home Going, on my holds list for the library, but it's going to be about a two to three month wait for that. So we will get it when we get it. Okay, I have put him to bed, so I'm back. The next thing with my... September TBR is I am doing a reading vlog where I am picking for the month. I pick a number. All of my shelves are numbered. They are also separated by genre and I pick the number out of the jar and then I get to pick about four books to read for that month. I believe that I will be starting that reading vlog this weekend. So I don't want to spoil it, but suffice it to say that I chose four books for that already and I'm very excited about it. And I will be starting to film that reading vlog soon. Next thing is I'm carrying over the Saturday Night Ghost Club from September into August. I have about 
100 pages left until I'm finished. I'm actually going to sit here and read this this evening because my husband has class. I also started reading Charlotte's Web by E.B. White with my son as our bedtime story. I'm actually really enjoying this. I have, if I've read this before, I don't remember it. And I'm having a blast reading him about a chapter a night. I got an illustrated edition. I don't know if, yeah, color photos, which is great. I didn't know that it was the full color edition. I have also decided to start, bear with me, the Dark Tower graphic novel series. And I realized that I just said earlier in this video that I was tired of reading the Dark Tower, but I have never read the graphic novel series. I am in book one. I got these from my library because they do not have a digital copy. So I've got the entire series and my husband and I are going to be reading it. Let's talk about the other things that I have planned. Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I'm going to listen to the audiobook. I heard from Books and Lala that it was something that you should probably read sooner rather than later because of some of the references being dated. I am in the middle of Road Rage by Joe Hill. That is my graphic novel that I'm reading on my phone and that is pretty good. Nothing exciting going on there just yet. I am over halfway through Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. I received an arc from Tiffany McDaniel. Uh, the book came out this month, end of August, end of August. And I have been meaning to get to it. I'm meaning to get to it and I'm finally getting to it. Um, so far I'm enjoying it, but I love The Summer That Melted Everything. It's one of my all-time favorite books and this one's just not hitting me the same which isn't a bad thing but for a book club that I am in on Facebook the book of the month is The Fountainhead by Anne, Anne Rind and I'm almost 100% positive that I don't have that book on my shelf. No I don't. Honestly I have never had a desire to read this and it's on my TBR because classics and I like to throw them in throughout. Who knows? Maybe I'll read it and I really enjoy it. Also this end table behind me, yes it is the style of large books in their drawers. I love it. It was a wedding gift from my aunt. The next book is White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. I have been working on my anti-racist journey for about two years now. The book that I will tell you that changed my life that started me on said journey is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. To me everybody needs to read that book because it is the stepping stone that took me to Stamp from the Beginning by Abram X. Kendi, How to Be an Anti-Racist. These are things that I read in 2018 and I read a couple more last year in 2019. So I am looking forward to getting White Fragility. Obviously anti-racist books have been really, really popular. Getting them from my library has been difficult, but this hold finally came available so I'm very much looking forward to reading it and I will be reading that with my friend Roxanne. I will also be reading Creatures of the Night by Neil Gaiman. This is a very short graphic novel. Um, I like to have a graphic novel on my phone because before I go to bed at night I will read like 10-15 pages and then fall asleep. Next is it's called Apocalypse Girl. Apocalypse to girl something like that by Andrew McLean. I know nothing about this other than it is obviously dystopian and sci-fi. Check check all my boxes and the cover is gorgeous. Last four are possibles. My TBR outside of my challenge TBR and my holds from the library the Dark Tower series. Um, these are things that I could potentially read this month and the first one is Idiot by Laura Cleary. I love Laura's videos. <laughs> yeah, she's so funny. And when I heard that she wrote a memoir, I thought, just give it a shot. The next is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a newer horror release and he is an indigenous voice. A goal that I have set for myself is to read more indigenous voices because that is something that is sorely lacking on my 
red shelf. I'm trying to rectify that, but I've heard really good things about that. The next one is Lakewood by Megan Giddings. I subscribe to tailored book recommendations or tbr.com. I paid $50 for an entire year subscription. So every quarter I get three book reviews from them. And uh, last time I got The Poppy War, Axiom something and Rosewater. And they were Poppy War and Rosewater. Rosewater was really weird and Poppy War was okay. And the Axiom Files or something, that's the name of the series, was a four star read. It was my favorite of the three. And that was more of like a lighthearted sci-fi. So Lakewood by Megan Giddings is a sci-fi. I literally know nothing about it. I know that she is a, um, a black author, I believe. And the characters in this book are PFC, which is what I asked of them to recommend. I wanted own voices stories and I wanted more diversity as far as characters in the book and authors that came through. And the last book that is a possible, and this is a book that I have been wanting to get to for a while. I just discovered that my library has it on Hoopla as an audiobook. And I've wanted to listen to the audiobook because the author narrates it. And that is Dietland by Sarai Walker. Sarai Walker. In reading One to Watch last month, it brought up a lot of questions and a lot of things that I personally need to work on as far as um, body positivity and how I move forward in the body that the good Lord gave me as a plus size woman. I'm really hoping that Diet Land is going to be one of those books that makes me feel good or makes me think because I like books that do all of those things. This is effectively the world's longest video. So I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed it. A little chaos, a little madness. I'm super looking forward to September's reads. And I'm gonna get to read in. I'm gonna eat dinner, get to read in, and do my thing. Have a fabulous rest of your week, holiday weekend, etc. Um, take care of yourselves. Like, subscribe, all of the good things. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.